And this is the writing that was written, meany, meany, tekel a person. I know it's a great subject, and it's an evangelistic service, subject, and not one for divine healing, but it's for the greatest of divine healing. The sickest body that I know tonight is the spiritual body of our Lord Jesus on this earth so torn up and broke up till it really needs divine healing. Now, our subject tonight begins in Babylon, <clears throat> and Babylon was first uh, located, which it is yet, in the uh, Shanghai, and it was first called the Gate of God, Babel. Babel and later was called Babylon, which means confusion. And Babylon appears in the first of the Bible, in Genesis, and it appears in the middle of the Bible, and it appears in the last of the Bible, the last book, Revelation. And being that it's all through the Bible, it must be in existence yet today. Now. Babylon was founded by a man named Nimrod, who was the son of Ham, a very evil man. And Babylon was once the capital of the world. When this great city was built, there all the little cities all around it paid tribute, taxes and so forth, to this great city, Babylon. And through the center of the city came the great river Euphrates. If you'll notice it, it's the city of the devil, for it's designed after the city of God, as the river of life before the throne. And in this city, they had great swinging gardens off the walls around, and it was such a great, mighty nation at the time until it had whipped the known world. And all the world was paying tribute. It had progressed further in science, and it had the latest things that science could produce. It had the latest chariots, the latest designs, the most powerful armors and best of metals. It was an outstanding to the rest of the world. And then inside these walls, where King Balthasar was king during the time of this event that we're speaking on tonight, and we find out that during this time there was a righteous man by the name of Daniel, a prophet of the Lord was taken in captivity at the time. He had served as the prince over all of the astrologers and so forth, and the wise men and the magi in the reign of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, and now Balthasar had taken over. Balthasar was a wicked sort of a man. And then all the people of Babylon with uh, such a security as they felt they had. Once inside those gates, and the gates closed with 200 foot walls, 80 foot thick, just think of how secure they must have felt in those walls. But just remember this, no matter how secure that science has made you, God will find you out when you sin. There is only one security, and that's in Christ Jesus. Now, as they felt their great importance of being the leading nation of the world, a very typical modern civilization, just like the one that we live in, this fabulous America. And I'm kindly disturb myself, but I'm afraid we're taking the same attitude that they took, that we 
healed because that we have got what we think the best scientists and the best machine guns and the atomic bombs and the fastest planes and we have tried being the leading nation of the world we have somehow felt our safety without God and God never changes his attitude towards sin is the same today as it was then and there's no hiding place down here only in Christ are you secure how little did they know that many miles away was digging a river bed to turn the Euphrates River so that they could march under the walls. When they felt they were secured, all the time they felt that way, if they did feel that, then they went wading in sin. It seems like that when man gets to the place that he feels that he's self-sufficient, sin begins to take a hold of him. The church, the nation, the individual that feels that he doesn't need any help from outside, sin begins to reign in. That is true. And we would notice too that when people begin to feel that superior feeling, usually sin sets in and cankers them. But never forget but what your sins will find you out. This king thought he would have him a great big time. And he set a date that he was going to have a great big dance, or as I would say, a modern rock and roll. No more to it. And so he set the time and he invited all the celebrity, all of the soldiers and the captains and all of the wives and the concubines, and he called in the best liquors that he could find for this great rock and roll party that he was going to have. He thought he was safe. He thought there was nothing could harm him because he was safe. And he had this great spree in one of these gardens just behind the palace. And while out there in the garden Perhaps they had decorated it all up real pretty, all the tinsel hanging, and got all of the showgirls and many of the women to come to entertain the soldiers and their beer and their wines. If that isn't a good modern setup of a rock and roll party today, I don't know where one would be. Exactly. And they got everything ready. And they were going to have a big time. And no doubt but what many married women came. Their husbands was left at home as babysitters while they went out to have a good time. And vice versa, no doubt a mother walked the floor with a sick baby while a drunken husband went out to have a big time. And I can see them as they begin to drink and to have a big time. And I'd imagine they really struck up the band and had the music and the little teenagers swinging one another and the soldiers drunk, grabbing the women and throwing them over their heads and kissing them and sitting down in the chairs and hoorahing, thinking they were safe. Oh, America, the God that looked down on that drunken rock and roll party is looking on you tonight. And what a time they must have been having. 
And I can imagine this here king felt the Savior was a modern Elvis Presley. He could do a lot of their fantastics that they had. And all of their carrying on and not knowing all the time that death laid at the door. So as the party got into good swing, usually just about like a great setting of a modern Hollywood telecast, they thought they would crack some good jokes about religion. About like an Arthur Godfrey outfit or something like that modern today, or some Ernie Ford pea picker, crack some kind of a joke about the preacher. But God still looks down from heaven. But you reap what you sow. Just be aware of that, people. Whether you are a nation or a church or an individual, you reap what you sow. And while I can see this king stand up and say, Just a minute, girls. Let's have a good religious joke on the preacher and so forth. And all the tinsel are flying and the young lady saying, Whoopee, yes, I believe we'd like to hear that. And the young soldiers are carrying on like the teenagers of the day. But this is no more than a modern Babylon. If we sin, we're going to pay for our sins. Just be it assured to you. They had a prophet there, but they wouldn't listen. They had the message, but they wanted to make fun of it. If that isn't modern America, I don't know it. They got the gospel, the truth, but they like to make fun of it. God doesn't permit sinners to make fun of his people. You'll pay for it someday. And when they poured their Earl's 92 or Pat's Blue Ribbon into it to have a good joke out of it, oh, they tip the glasses and the vessels and begin to drink and laugh and make fun of the religion of the Lord. They were ignorant of what they were doing. And so is this nation tonight, ignorant of rejecting the message of the Lord Jesus Christ in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and being born again. Though they were religious, now that drunken party of rock and rolls, they were religious because the Bible said that they praised their gods. So you can be ever so religious and still be wrong. It's right. It's not the sincerity. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is a way of death. So they had a great state church and a religion that they could serve, and they made fun of the holy things of God. That's very typical of today, making fun of the holy things of God. They call the people that try to live clean and decent and upright. They call them old-fashioned or holy roller or some kind of a scandalous name. Oh, how can you escape judgment? The blood of the martyrs call against it. If God doesn't judge this nation for its modern sin, he'll have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to him for destroying them. Right. We are bound for judgment. And these great wonders that you see our blessed Savior doing, they are Warning signs that judgment is at hand. And she's combed this nation from side to side, from east to west.
from north to south. And they spin it, laugh at it, criticize it, write it up in their papers as nonsense. Think of it. Modern Babylon. Now, while they were drinking, dipping their cups and drinking, all of a sudden, when this great movie playboy by the name of Beltasazer was just about ready to take a drink from his cup, his eyes seemed to bulge out as he turned and looked towards the castle. For he saw coming from heaven the hand of a man. And it began to write up and down on the wall. I want you to notice it wrote on the plaster. Now perhaps the candlesticks were setting out from their tinsel where they were having their modern rock and roll and the light was flickering against the wall. God doesn't do things in a corner. It's right out under the lights where God speaks and moves. And then as he noticed this handwriting on the wall, I can imagine the little missus with her lips painted about like, I don't know what, and her hair all tinseled up and playing around and with these drunken soldiers said, wonder what's the matter with the boy tonight. And as she he up and some young man grabbed her and said, all right, let's dance this next one together. And the music stopped. Oh, this great sinful nation, sometimes your rock and rolls are going to stop if you won't listen to the voice of a preacher, you won't listen to the hand of God in judgment someday, but the rock and roll will stop just the same as the bands did and played near my God to thee on the Titanic. Someday you're going to change that tune. And the music stopped. And they noticed their jokester, their, their star on the television cast. And he was standing, his knees beating together as he looked and seen this great thing taking place. And quickly, being in a very modern place, the Bible said he called in all of his soothsayers, astronomers, all the bishops, the doctors and the popes and the cardinals and so forth. And said, now I tell you, gentlemen, I've given you the privilege to preach and to do what you wanted to do. Now interpret for me that on the wall. But just as it was then, so is it now. They wasn't used to the supernatural. They know nothing about it. They didn't know how to interpret unknown tongues. They know nothing about a heavenly language. And they were dumbfounded. They know nothing about it. But these bishops and cardinals and great doctors could not interpret the supernatural. And finally, a little queen, remember, she wasn't at the rock and roll party. And the only way that she knew something was going on Word came to her that the king was all shook up and the party had stopped. She would make one of the good believers. And somehow or another, she had been one who had not forgotten. She rushed into the party and as she seen the modern jokester all shook up in all of his band, she said, Oh, king, live forever. But he didn't know he was dead right then. Said, live forever. I know you're all bothered about that handwriting on the wall. And I see the Pope and the bishops and the cardinals and the doctors of divinity, and none of them can read it. 
But oh, King, let me tell you something. There is a man in your kingdom that knows about supernatural. Oh, brother, when we see the handwriting on the wall today, but there is a man who knows about it. You might have went to every doctor's office in the city and they told you you've got to die, but there is a man. You may have waited and sinned until your soul is as black as the smutty walls of hell and you're ready to commit suicide without a hope, but there is a man and his name is Jesus. He knows the supernatural. There is a man that he knows the supernatural. Four years ago, they found the spirit of God in him. And he had an excellent spirit. He could interpret dreams. He saw visions. And every one of them was just exactly right. So don't be troubled. Just give me a few minutes and I'll get him here. There will be one day you'll call on him. You might not have no room for him in your house. You're too busy watching television, playing cards, drinking beer, attending rock and roll parties. But there's one time you're going to call on him. And so Daniel was brought in. I couldn't imagine a man of God living in such a place as that unless he had called out against it. But you see, the king had paid no attention to it. That's the reason he was in the condition that he was in. And they brought Daniel. And he said, Why can't your popes and doctors interpret for you? Daniel said, Oh, Belteshazzar, you know all these things. They're not hid from you. And I say to America, I wish... I could make them at this minute hear my voice. You're not ignorant to all these things. As the nations before has sinned and done what we have done, we are weighed in the balance and found wanting. What happened to France? What happened to Germany? What happened to the other nations? who went wine, women, and big time. It always comes out that way, and we're not immune from judgment. God is just. Right at that same time, may I say first, when he was standing there, watching that writing on the wall, little did he know that right under the gates, right then the guards had been killed, and the soldiers were in the streets slaying the palace guards. They were on the steps and those women standing there away from their babies, away from their husbands and husbands from their wives, all drunk up, listen to some kind of a modern dance and carry on. And the soldiers was on the steps and a few minutes the king would be cut down. All oh, that drunken bunch of men would be cut down by an atheotic, devil-possessed nation. I wonder in this day when we think we are so secure and all of a sudden we find out that Russia is five years ahead of us in science. We've been to too many parties. We've weighed too much in sin. The church is so asleep, it don't care for prayer meetings no more. They're unconcerned. They too put a voice in against the real true spirit of the living God. They won't have them. They're so denominations, so dressed up. They have no time for prayer meetings or televisions and picture shows and getting around on a drunken parties and things. That's true. 
That may sound old-fashioned, but it's what the nation needs today. It's too much sissing around with the gospel with rubber gloves on. It's got to be handled barehanded by the Holy Spirit. You'll buy Elvis Presley's records and stay home from church to hear we love Sissy one of these days. You're weighed in the balance and found wanting. What's happened? There's a handwriting on the wall. You little smart of uh, girls that run along with your little lips painted up like some kind of a rosebud and would laugh at a preacher on the corner preaching the gospel. And you little teenager that think you've got more gumption and you've got intelligence you control. What's going to happen to you, Papa, that sits home at night with Mama and watches the television while Junior's in the hot rod and sister's down at the canteen somewhere and she's down there doing a rock and roll. And what's going to happen to you, church member? What's going to be your outcome? You may have your name on every book or the biggest church in the city. But unless you're under the security of the blood of the Lord Jesus, you'll perish with those who will perish. What will happen to you young girls and you young men and all of you at that time? Sin has to be paid for. No matter what nation it is or who it is, it doesn't individually our nation. It's going to be paid for. What causes that? Because you have listened to such stuff as these television programs on rock and roll and sin and some cold formal preacher not able to interpret the supernatural, the handwriting's on the wall. Why we are weighed in the balance and found wanting. When could that take place? Before daylight in the morning. Who's going to stop it? Try it. The Bible says it'll happen. But let me tell you, that'll never touch the church of the living God. We'll be gone by that time. If that thing is so close and we see the handwriting on the wall, there's nothing can stop this thing from happening now. America's been preached to, the supernatural's been done, and continually they wait right on over the top of it. God just has so many he's elected, and when the last one's in, that closes the door, and it's over. Then there's nothing left but judgment when mercy has been spurned. But if that is that close, and any teacher knows that the church goes in the rapture before the tribulation sets in, so if that is that close could happen before morning, what about the rapture? It's closer than that. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The writing is written, and it is written in the Bible, and we're living to see it. Repent and be baptized, said Peter, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises to you and to your children and to them that's far off. For there's not another name given under heaven among men whereby ye must be saved. You can be Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Catholic. You're lost until you become of Christ. And Christ comes into you. It's the new birth by the Holy Spirit. Receive him tonight while we pray. With your head bowed. I just wonder this. How many in here that knows that this great thing would happen? You may go to bed tonight with your wife, and in the morning she'll be gone. You, father and mother, may kiss your little ones to sleep tonight, and tomorrow morning the little bed be empty. And you run down the street to find out what happened to Mrs. Jones. She's gone too. The rapture is at hand. The Bible is plainly given. When the tribulation comes, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, goes back to his Maker, and you go with it. 
no matter how religious you are, it won't go unless there's something in there to take you. How many tonight with your heads bowed when the face of this message would raise your hands to the Christ and say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And if you should come, I want to go with you. Would you raise your hand? God bless you just all over the church. Literally 200 or more hands up in the air. Sinner friend, if you've never accepted Christ, would you at this time raise your hand and say, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me. Therefore, except the man be born again, he will in no wise enter into the kingdom or cannot even see the kingdom. We're at the end. There's nothing can help. The thing that's going to destroy the world is in the hands of sinful man. There's just a few more. You might be the last one that's ordained to come to Christ. When that last one comes, judgment strikes. Like in one thing yet, that might be you. Blessed Lord, we're standing in a terrible condition tonight. As we read your word and know that most any hour the radios could flash and the rock and roll bands would go to sing near my God to thee. But it's too late then. Judgment is struck. Missiles are pointed at us. Destruction by miles after miles, by tons after tons of, of earth-sweeping atomic energies and so forth that would set the whole world afire. And it's in the hands of sinful man. And the Bible said that that's the way it'll happen. And we see the handwriting on the wall. Oh, Lord God, I'm insufficient to try to bring a message like this to a people. And I feel how little I am standing here to try to handle such a subject. But will you forgive me for my part of not being able to do it? But somehow from my heart, I ask you to sink the message the way you would have it into their hearts. For I do see the hour approaching. I'm so glad to know him. I'm so glad that this old frail body that's swiveling up here will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. I'll turn back to a young man again to live forever. I believe the Holy Spirit's well pleased this great number coming to Christ. Now you find you a church right quick. Be baptized and go into that church, a good spirit-filled church, and there remain as long as you live. How the people in torment tonight would love to hear that. The people who's probably sat in the seat that you're sitting tonight and has heard the gospel and has passed on is in torment tonight. How they'd love to take that seat that you're sitting in. Too far gone now. Just think when he stood around an audience like this. One day there was a man came up called Peter, or his name was Simon, and he said, Your name is Simon. You're the son of Jonas. But from hereafter you'll be called Peter. Who did he become? The beloved apostle. When Philip found Nathaniel and he came up, he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. In other words, a Christian, an honest person. He said, How'd you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. How many sick people in here wants to be healed? Raise your hand. Just everywhere. All right? Sick people that wants to be healed. Now, if there's anybody in this building that I, I don't know, no one that I'm looking at, I think this is Rosella sitting here, the little girl that was the alcoholic that was called out in the meeting somewhere, been an alcoholic, and the doctors had passed her up. She, when she was called by the Lord, the girl knows I've never seen her nor whatever, and the Lord told her all about her life and her condition and told her she was going to be well, and here she is tonight, a trophy of God's grace. An alcoholic, the doctor after doctor turned her away, even alcoholic synonymous. I know her. But otherwise, I'm pretty sure that this brother looking at me, sitting right here with a gray suit on, he's the brother that brings us the flowers, I believe. That's right. Uh, I can't think of his name now. He was down in my house not long ago with his brother, Jose. <coughs> Schultz, Brother Schultz. Outside of that, 
I thought I seen Brother Fred Softman uh, just a few moments ago somewhere in the building, but I forgot where it was at now. However, he was, it's here somewhere. And I, I don't know no one else, but God knows you all. If you just pray and ask God, test your faith, just think, Christ promised it. A little while and the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I, I, not another, I is a personal pronoun, I will be with you to the end of the world. The things that I do shall you also. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true? It's got to be true. Right here, it's a corner. There's a lady sitting right here on the corner. It's a colored woman. Lady, I don't know you. God does know you. But there's that light just above the woman now. She has, if the Lord will reveal to me what your trouble is and what you're praying about, will you believe that it's the Lord Jesus to help you? You must be in trouble or something you're desiring, because there it is. See, friends, you say, well, I don't see it. That's possible that you wouldn't see it. I'm looking right straight at it. See? You say, well, Brother Branham, if you can see it with your senses, I can too. Oh, no. Paul saw that the Jesus in a form of a light, and those who were with him didn't see it. See? The Magi saw the star, the light that led them, but no one else saw it. It's just far some. It's gifts. The woman has sinus trouble. That is right. You also have heart trouble. That's exactly right. Listen, your name is, they call you Essie. Mm -hmm. Your last name is Upshire. You live on North Cleveland Street. Your address is 1264. That's exactly right. You're, you touch something, lady. You know you never touch me. That girl sitting next to you there, she's praying too. And she's praying for somebody else. And that's your mother. And she has something wrong in her lungs. And you're some connection with this woman here. You are her daughter-in-law. And your name is Margaret. And that's right. And you live at the same place. I see you coming and going in. What do you think about it, sir, the next man sitting here? Do you believe that Jesus Christ be the Son of God? You do? If the Lord will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you accept him? You have stomach trouble. That's right. If that's right, stand on your feet. Correctly. You're a preacher. Of course, you say he's looking at his clergy clothes, all right? Besides that, Someone expects you to be a Presbyterian, but you're a Pentecostal preacher. That's right. <laughs> your nervousness is what made your ulcer. It's gone. Go home and be well, brother. Amen. Have faith in God. Just don't doubt. What do you think sitting right here? Yes. You believe? You believe me to be God's servant? You want something from God? If God will reveal to me what you want, will you believe that the supernatural is being done? You believe it just exactly what Jesus would say? All your heart. You have a growth, and that growth is on your hip. That's right. And you also have stomach trouble. It's caused from a nervous condition. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your name is Eva May. Redmond is your last name. You live at a street, 1378 West 13th Street. That's correct. 
that you might know that I'd be God's servant, that's your little girl sitting there you want wanting prayer for. Her. That little girl has hemorrhages. And to come on her when she gets excited or goes to crying real hard, that's thus saith the Lord. That little boy is her brother. That's right. The little boy also you want prayer for. He's bothered with constipation. And he's fell off a lot of weight just recently too, hasn't he? That's thus saith the Lord. The white woman sitting next to you. Seems like she's disturbed about something. Do you believe, sister? You believe God has sent his son Jesus Christ to declare to the Gentile generation that he's coming soon? You have a gland trouble you're suffering with, and also a colon trouble, and you're nervous. You're not from this city either. You're from Detroit. Your number where you live is 12134 Sandler Street. That's right, Detroit, Michigan. You're an Italian. Your name is Viola. P O L O F Palomba. Uh -huh. Have faith in God and receive what you ask for. What do you think down in this way? Do you believe with all your heart? What about you, little lady sitting there? Do you believe with all your heart? Little lady on the end there? Well, either one of you, it doesn't matter. What do you think? You there with next to her? You believe with all your heart? Little mother sitting looking at me? What do you think about it? You believe that the Lord Jesus would heal you of those very coarse veins that you have? You do? Maybe you'd think this you'd believe more if I tell you your husband had ear trouble and you wanted him prayed for her. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Now do you believe me? You wasn't getting it at first. That kind of woke you up to think because you received your healing then. You raise your hand next to her, lady. What do you think about it? You believe that God would make you well? You will? All right. Then your arthritis will leave you. What did you think, sir? You didn't wave your hands. You believe God would heal you through heart trouble? Make you well? You believe he will? You sit looking at him there. You believe too? You won't got, you had heart trouble too, didn't you? Yes, and you had diabetes also. That's right. You believe God will make you well? Then you can have it. Don't you believe? Have faith in God. What down in here? You, sir, staying on the end of the seat. You believe? You should. You've just been healed. You had foot trouble, didn't you? You believe in the Lord Jesus? But you're praying for somebody else now. That's your brother. And he's in Wisconsin. He just had an operation on his lungs. Half of it was taken out. That's right. You believe? Then you can receive what you ask for. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain, give him glory on ye people, for his blood hath washed away each stain. Blessed Lord, We'll see you someday coming yonder in the heavens. We know you're here now in a spiritual body. You've declared yourself perfectly to us. The world cannot read that, Lord. We don't even expect them to because you said they'll not see me no more. But we know that you've got children that can see you. We've got children that know you. And we're thankful for it. And we pray now that you'll sweep over this building with the great Holy Spirit and heal every sick person in here. Just now, get glory to yourself, Lord. May the people not sit in deadness, but may they rise and shine and give God praise and glory in Jesus' name. If you believe Him, stand to your feet and give Him praise with all your heart and rejoice in the Lord Jesus, for He now heals every one of you for His great divine glory. The Lord bless you. Amen.